Hey guys, so we're going to take a look at Pokemon Red version on the Nintendo Game Boy. Now of course today is a very special day for Pokemon fans because 20 years ago, Pocket Monsters Red and Green were released in Japan. So Pokemon is now 20, which makes me feel very old indeed. But uh, as you know, Pokemon is of course uh, celebrating such a momentous anniversary, I want to uh, go back to where it all started for me and we'll take another look at Pokemon Red version, which of course uh, has an excellent box and manual. So on the front cover here, of course, we've got this fantastic looking Ken Sugimori artwork of Charizard. Uh, this, of course, is the reason that I bought red version over blue. Because, uh, you know, it always depends whether Blastoise or Charizard was the one that appealed to you more. So I always like the fiery dragon type. So now you can see down here, of course, red version. Link to blue version to catch all 150 monsters. Of course, Pokemon as a term meant nothing to anyone at that point. And you can actually see I got this for $50 from Casey's Toy World which uh, actually burnt down not that long ago, but was uh, rebuilt shortly after, so that was good at least. And of course we've got the classic Game Boy logo on the side. Now on the sides of the spines here we actually have the Pokemon logo, and we have some more artwork. So we've got there a uh, very sad looking Cubone, and poor little guy, this, in all the artwork for Cubone, he always looks really sad, which I guess he should, his mother is dead. And he's wearing a skull, which was one of the dark elements of Pokemon. Uh, we have some great artwork of Gengar here, and uh, really shows off Ken Sugimori's classic watercolour art style, which I uh, really do miss. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it for the sides. Unfortunately, the box was damaged many years ago, and I taped it up, which may not have been the best idea. You've also got some artwork of Snorlax down there. And of course, there he is, Pokemon Trainer Red. And uh, there's classic Fat Pikachu, who they actually did uh, release some merchandise for in the 20th anniversary, which was very cool. So gameplay on the Game Boy Compact video game system. And that of course shows it in black and white. But then, gameplay you on the Super NES using the Super Game Boy adapter, both sold separately. So of course if you played this on a Super Game Boy, which was an accessory for the SNES, um, you could actually play it in full colour, and it does look very nice on the TV, for what it is anyway. And of course a little Pokeball there. So you've finally been granted your Pokemon Trainer's License. Now it's time to head out to, uh, to become the world's greatest Pokemon Trainer. It's going to take all you've got to catch 150 Pokemon in this enormous world. Catch and train monsters like the shockingly huge Pichu. Face off against Blastoise's torrential water cannons. Stand strong when facing Pidgeot's stormy Gust. I don't think Gust would be the one you have to worry about, but... Trade with friends and watch your Pokemon evolve. Important, no single Pokemon can win at all. Can you develop the ultimate Pokemon strategy to defeat the eight gym leaders and become the greatest Pokemon master of all time? Oh, actually, I'm sorry. Gym leaders! You've got to yell the gym part. But, uh, yes, the classic marketing that they used to, uh, you know, get the game <laughs> to everyone. So, of course, we have our manual, or as they call it, of course, a Pokemon Trainer's Guide. And, you know, it's not actually bound, it's just a little print, but I do like that attention to detail. It's very nicely textured as well. So, in classic Nintendo style, this is a fully coloured and very, very detailed manual. It explains all the facets of the game and even goes over the story. So, uh, story, you're an 11 year old boy living in Pallet Town with your mother. Your rival lives next door to you. You and your rival used to play nicely together when you were little, but lately he's become mean. He sees you as his rival because you have the same age and height. You also get similar grades in school. Ah oh, yes, school, that thing that uh, only sort of exists in Pokemon. Okay, so basically, you know, Professor Oak stops you from going into the grass. Hey, don't go into the grass! It was Professor Oak! There are wild Pokémon living in the grass. They can be very dangerous. If you're a trained Pokémon, you can let them fight against wild ones. Professor Oak takes you back to his lab where your rival is waiting. Professor Oak invited him because he is Professor Oak's grandson. Professor Oak spoke. Uh, there are three Pokémon here, so take the one you like. Now that you have a Pokémon, the rest is up to you. Truly, it's poetry, isn't it? Just amazing writing there. <laughs> but we do also get some great artwork of Squirtle. Uh, Bulbasaur there, firing off a, a uh, leech seed, I think. And of course, there is Blue. Uh, or Gary, of course, as he's more commonly known now. That was uh, thanks to the anime. We actually get a little world map here, which is rather unusual because it's not a uh, drawn one. It's actually just kind of more like a... more of a practical map, I guess you'd say. So you start at Palatown, you go to Viridian City, uh, Pewter City, and it basically just takes you around so you always know where to go if you've got the manual with you. So, a very handy thing, and it was uh, certainly very cool at the time. So, you know, roots, sea, and underground. So, and of course we've got some great artwork of Charmander with his very deep blue eyes. 
Again, the art direction uh, in the early Pokemon games is very different to what it is now, but personally, I really like it a lot more. I think, uh, I think it's a shame that Sugimori went away from the watercolor stuff and kind of moved into a different style. I still like his new style, but I just don't think it's quite as nice as this. Not quite as lush or something. But, uh, of course, they explain evolution, defeating the eight Pokemon leaders, not gym leaders, Pokemon leaders. Um, all the good stuff that you would expect. And, you know, it's, it's communicated pretty well. So, but there's, you know, of course, you know, everyone knows how to play Pokemon now. So the main thing that you read this for is the artwork and just kind of fun little bits of trivia and dialogue. So, of course, we've got some great artwork there of Venusaur, Blastoise, and Charizard. And, of course, you actually have a beginner's guide. So it teaches you, you know, you start out Power Town, your home, your rival's home, selecting your Pokemon. Uh, there are also all these Oaks memos. First time players should choose Bulbasaur because it is a grass type Pokemon. The first, po the first boss uses rock Pokemon. Grass Pokemon are more effective when attacking rock Pokemon. So interesting that they actually refer to gym leaders as bosses. Because uh, that's kind of how I always used to think of them. And then of course it takes you through Route 1. We have uh, yeah, Rattata and some great artwork of Pidgey there. And uh, yeah, just a lot of cool stuff. It's just really, it really is a sort of trainer's guide. It's, it's just kind of getting, getting kids up to date with the world of Pokemon which, of course, was completely new at the time. And, uh, yeah, before I got the game, I had been watching the anime. And, um, you know, so I, I certainly knew it about Pokemon. I knew a decent amount about, the, you know, the story and the world and things like that. But, uh, you know, it was just kind of a really clever idea to get kids more invested on the ride home from the shop. Pikachu. <laughs> Again, his fat, cute little fat design. I always like fat Pikachu because it just seems more... More in keeping with him being a mouse, uh, because you know mice usually aren't that slender like the uh, the current modern design of Pokémon. Okay, so then we have a breakdown of Brock's Pokémon. So Geodude level 12 and Onyx level 14, and of course Brock over there as well, looking uh, pretty menacing. It's fun funny when you actually go back to Pokémon Red and Blue because uh, Brock is actually a really really menacing looking character. He's got that weird cross arm uh, pose when you meet him. Even, actually, to be fair, all the gym leaders are reasonably menacing to some degree. I mean, Misty not so much, but Lieutenant Surge. Uh, Erica's gym is a bit strange. Of course, you know, Giovanni. Uh, you yeah, know, Blaine. Koga. Lots of good stuff there. But, uh, yeah, really just a lot of artwork. I don't exactly know how many of the uh, 150 Pokemon are actually in here. Probably, probably about 20 or 30, I suppose. So, you know, Zubat, Abra, Ponyta... It was such a great variety, and I, I really love most of these designs. Certainly not all of the Gen 1 designs are great, but I think the majority of them, they did a really fantastic job in terms of taking existing animals that we all know, and then just kind of making them a little bit more unusual. So over here we actually have a Pokemon type chart, which looks pretty, uh, pretty intimidating, especially to a child. And basically it just explains how all the types uh, work together. So uh, I never really understood the, the type chart, I just kind of learned them off by heart. Okay, so, <laughs> Fugut is fight, of course, PKMon is, uh, or PKMN is Pokemon, and then of course item and run. So just explaining all the basic stuff, the uh, contractions, so there's of course um, Diglett linking up, yeah, ga yo, game link cable, and of course we have some great artwork of Red on his bike there, using the trade center, ah, the memories. The Colosseum, there's got some great artwork of Ghastly. There's Cubone again, poor little Cubone. And then we actually have a list of, uh, I don't know if I just skipped over part of it, no? We have a list of some of the early techniques in the game. So, you know, Tackle, Growl, Tail Whip, all that sort of thing. And then we actually have some items, and uh, interesting enough, they're actually called Monster Balls in here. And Monster Balls are what uh, Pokeballs are called in Japan. Or well, certainly they were in the early days. So, of course, we've got Pokeballs, Great Balls, Ultra Balls, Safari Balls, and Master Balls. And we have some of the mystery items, which is, uh, you know, kind of handy. <laughs> Although it just says, you know, Old Amber, you will need to find the secret of this item. And then we have recovery items, and interesting enough, it actually shows a needle, which, uh, you know, is a detail that they don't usually go into for Pokemon games now. But, uh, you know, Antidotes, Burn Heals, Revives, Full Restores, all that good stuff. Then we have Pokemon power-ups, so of course you can see a rare candy over there, which seems to have like a Pikachu tail or an M, M for something, I don't know. Um, 
field moving, so bicycle, escape rope, all that sort of thing. It's really like a very classic RPG manual, this, actually. Rather than a Pokemon manual, it's an RPG manual. Um, yeah, much like Final Fantasy uh, 6 on the Super Nintendo, it's American manual. And then they actually do have a breakdown of miscellaneous items for things like the Gold Teeth, so it tells you that these belong to the Warden of Safari Zone. So if you're having trouble, of course, the manual could help you out. Then finally, we have this big Pokemon list. And this uh, is certainly not filled in, as you can see, but it does have some artwork for a bunch of different ones, so that's always cool to look at. And I think you were probably supposed to write and draw it, them in yourself. I never did, though, and I'm, I'm kind of glad about that, to be honest, because I didn't wreck my manual. A fairy down there, Zubat, Jigglypuff, Paris. And uh, it goes all the way up to 150, as I recall. But uh, yeah, lots of artwork in here, which is great. So uh, of course, Pokemon games now don't even have manuals. So it's a it's a very we things have changed quite a bit in the past twenty years. Star you. Uh, this is pretty blank here. So all we've got is Magikarp and Eevee, and then we get up to one hundred and fifty Mewtwo. Of course, uh, Mew wasn't even mentioned in here. And then we actually have Pokemon Notes, so you had a little section here where you could keep track of your boxes and what Pokemon were in there. Which was a very cool idea. Of course, uh, back then it wasn't an easy process to change boxes, it was very slow and laborious and... It was just kind of a waste of... Uh, you yeah, know, took up a lot of your time. But... That is it for the Pokemon Red version manual. And then finally, of course, we have our cartridge. So here is Pokemon Red version in all its glory, slightly faded up the top as you can see, but not too bad given its age. So, uh, yeah, just basically a reprint of the front cover, it looks very nice, I love the fact that they actually did a red version cartridge, a red coloured cartridge. Um, and of course they, that was a tradition that went all the way up until, I believe it was Gen 4. So, uh, yeah, that was when they, they just kind of gave up with the DS coloured cartridges. But, uh, yeah, that is that. So, of course, a very happy 20th anniversary to Pokemon, even though I haven't haven't enjoyed the, the uh, last couple of genera or last couple of games as much. I really enjoyed Gen 5. Pokemon is definitely a very you know, a very important part of my childhood. I still love the series, I like to keep up with it, so you know, here's to 20 more years and a lot of a lot of great games in that in those 20 years. So thank you very much for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.